Welcome to the Engine Markets training session and good evening everyone. Meanwhile, others are joining in. We will start ahead with our training session for today. So today's topic is all about overview of Indian markets and sector-wise indices comparison. So what we are going to discuss here is first we are going to take a look towards the overview of the entire markets in the engine markets terminal. Whereas we will start comparing Indian indices with the global indices with certain sets of different sets of analysis like drawdowns, correlations. And also we are going to be comparing the sectoral performances of Indian indices. And then we are, be, we are going to be heading up to the Q&A session. Uh, so if you have any questions, any queries, please hit up in the chat box or verbally and we will try to address them. So hopefully my screen is visible and why my voice is audible to everyone. So we can then take it forward. So as you can see now, I have just uh, onboarded my engine markets terminal. So this is how the terminal looks like. And here what you can see is the market chart. So hopefully what we are going to be covering here is the market section and the compare section. And within the market section, we will cover a lot of things. So we, I will tell you how we can actually compare different sets of multiple indices in the market chart itself and then do the in-depth analysis within the market chart, right? So here, what you can do is uh, you can effectively compare, uh, let's say you want to compare Nifty 50, BSC Sensex, Nifty Next 50, you can easily do that. And once you do it, you can now see here that different sets of indices are now being onboarded into the market chart. Now here, furthermore, what you can see here is there are different levels to this market chart. To make it a proper uh, comparison ground, what you can do is you can rebase them up. Now rebase, what it does is when you click on it, it starts from one particular set of a point, which is 100, and then compares all the indices like Nifty 50, BSC, Sensex, and even Nifty Next 50 in one single go. Now let's compare other indices here. So let's say we are comparing uh, you know, Nifty Mid Cap, Nifty Small Cap, and Nifty 50. Now here you can see that they are being compared one by one, and you can e easily see that which one of the indices would have been a better option. So it, it effectively is nifty mid cap from one particular start date now hence in this case what you can do is you can also change the start date to change the start date all you need to do is just click on it and let's say we want to change it from 2017 and once you click on the 2nd january you can now see the start date being changed and you can now see the comparisons between all the indices in one single go now these comparison can be done for multiple sets of index let's say if i want to compare only the nifty index right now so what I can do is I can head over to the Indian equity sectors. Now, Indian equity sectors have two options. One of the options is the BSC indices. Other of them is an NSE indices. So currently what we are currently comparing is the NSE indices. We can click on the Nifty Pharma, Nifty IT, Nifty Banking, and even consumption. And you can now see all the indices are being added into the compare section. Now here in the comparison of the market chart, you can effectively, uh, you know, take a look towards multiple set of indices. There is no limit to this, but it is better to compare five to seven indices in one single go as it is a smaller tab. Similarly, what you can do is you can also compare world equity markets. To do that, head over to the world equity markets tab here in the right side. And what you can do is you can just click on them. Now, let's say if I want to remove one of the indices here because it's too much cluttered, there is not much of a, you know, inference we are getting on from this information. So what you can do is you can effectively click on the indices you have selected again. So let's say if I want to remove, let's say Nifty IT, Nifty Banking and Auto, right? So you can now see that they are being removed and you can now see these are the only indices being added into the market chart. Now here, there's another catch here. If you want to remove them in the chart, but do not want to remove from the market level or from the Indian equity sectors, you can effectively choose this from this section. So I'm just going to zoom in for your uh, uh, convenience to give you an idea here. Let's, let's zoom it in. And uh, the point here is that if you want to remove, let's say one of the chart here, right? You just want to keep the charting similar. So what you can do is you can click on the Nifty Pharma, Nifty Mid Cap, Nifty Small Cap, and even Dovin Jones. I can effectively see that these are being removed effectively from the system. And you can now compare only the three, which is NASDAQ, India Consumption, and Nifty 50. And that's how it works out. Similarly, I'm just going to explain the rebase again, because this gives us a proper idea that every single market levels start from different, different, uh, you know, point. So if you want to compare them effectively, you definitely need to rebase them. So rebase actually starts from one single point and it calculates the daily return data sets 
and gives you an endpoint about which particular setup and index would have been a better option from one particular start date. So that's how this works out for the entire set of the market chart. And you can effectively compare multiple sets of market levels in the system. Hence, we have also given that BAC index here as well. So you can explore this option. It's pretty easy. All you need to do is just click on them and then compare it. And here we have given the best BSE and, and, and the NSE sectors. Now these best BSE and NSE sectors helps us to determine what has been the first, uh, you know, one month performance, three months performance, six month performance, and the 12 months performance in the entire section. Now here you can toggle around with these months and you can now see that from the last one month, you can see the realty has been the best performing sector in the NSE. And here for the 12 months, you can effectively see that it's PSU bank. Now, what about the worst, uh, worst entire worst sectors? Now, worst sectors does not mean that they are underperforming. Sometimes you might see that there are some uh, positively performing sectors, but they are in the consideration worst performing sectors against others. So that's how it works out for any particular set of the month. So it is a relative sense what we have given here for the worst and the best performing. And similarly, what you can do is you can take a look towards the world equity markets. The world equity markets is given here. So I'm just going to zoom in again and show you the world markets here. Just a second. Yeah. So as you can see here in the world markets, uh, you can effectively see France, Germany, USA, UK, Hong Kong, India, and Japan. Now, what is India all about? Here you can see that uh, we effectively choose India as a Nifty 50 and all others like Dow and Jones, NASDAQ, which is the US Bay index. We have a UK, which is FTSE 100. So once you click on it, you can effectively see the performance within year to date and month to date. Now you can effectively perform analysis for world indices in the compare section. We are going to be heading towards that in the next uh, couple of minutes. But what you can see here is that in, within the world equity markets, you can change it from MTD to YTD and check it that what has been the month to date returns has been the uh, year to date performance accordingly. And you can check in for any particular set of the country, which are the major countries. So that's how this works out for the entire market chart. Now, what about the economic data? So I'm just going to give you. government bond tenure. I need to click on this button, which effectively clicks on this. And you can now see that these are the comparisons between the two countries given here. And similarly, you can also see the comparison of inflation rate. So if you want to compare inflation rate of India with other countries, you can do that as well. So that's how specifically it works out. And you can now see the comparisons of the inflation rate here. Here in this section, we have also given the historical analysis. So historical analysis of the uh, historical data sets of the economic data. So what you can do is you can click on this see history to check the history of that economic data. So this is what the history of the inflation rate of India shows you accordingly into the terminal. So that's how this works out for the economic data. And if you want to change the country on its entirety in the engine markets overview, what you can do is you can effectively click on this country here and you can change it to let's say United Kingdom. And you can now see the country as uh, with the United Kingdom itself. So that's how specifically it works out. So I hope my voice is audible to everyone. Uh, hello. Yes, voice is audible. Yes. Okay. Okay. I have one question if I can ask. Uh... Uh, so we can uh, uh, we can address this in the Q and A section itself. So with after we finish the session. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So that's uh, that's the economic data which I was talking about. Now let's uh, get ahead with the you know overview where I have actually talked about the all the parameters here. Now, there are some points I need to cover that will actually complete the overview section. One of them is actually to create uh, screenshots here. Now, screenshots can, can be created here. For an example, when I zoomed it in, you can effectively create a screenshot for any particular set of a tab. So for an example, you want to just compare Dow and Jones versus Nifty 50. This is what you want to show to the client and you want to screenshot it up. So all you need to do is just click on this uh, camera button and it screenshots the image. Now, these will be useful when you are doing your own customization analysis, may maybe making your own Word document of your own research. That is where these kind of a screenshots will come in handy when you're creating such reports. 
Similarly, you can also create the screenshot of this market levels. There's another way to create screenshots of the Indian equity sectors as well. So entirety of the Indian equity sectors with the NSE sector performance and the BSE sector performance can be captured through the screenshots. So that is uh, specifically it for the screenshot. And what you can do is you can also wrap this entirety of the market in one single go. To do that, just click on this PDF button and it wraps the entirety of it. Now you can see this is a dynamic PDF report because here what you can see is that whatever I've selected, let's say Nifty 50 and Dovan Jones, only that data sets are being shown. And similarly, you can also see other data sets, but they are not being shown into the system right now. And here uh, you can actually select as many index as you want and then display it and showcase, showcase it accordingly into the terminal. So that is the PDF all about. And uh, that is uh, that is it for the entire section. You can also see the economic data which I have chosen before was actually United Kingdom. That's why it is showing in this particular set of a tab. But if you want to show it India, you can just head back to the terminal, change it to India, and then it will show the PDF within India as an uh, uh, data sets in the macroeconomic data. So that's how it works out for the market section. Now let's talk about the comparisons of uh, sectoral indices and also the comparisons of global indices. Now, how do we compare global indices? We do come, we do have a comparison uh, section in the overview yet here, but here there's a limitation here. You cannot uh, do analysis on the drawdowns or the correlation analysis or check out point to point in the system. To do that, you can actually go ahead into the compare section. Now compare section is a section where you can effectively see different sets of, uh, you know, securities being compared. So this is a tab called compare securities where you can compare mutual funds, stocks, indices and even non-standard asset classes like uh, custom securities. Now here in this case, we are going to be comparing only the indices in this particular set of a session. Now, how do we add indices? To add any particular set of an index, there's an option called add other items. So I'm just gonna be deleting some of the index here. Let's delete all of them. And we are going to be adding couple of index here. Let's say we are adding Nifty 50 here, right? So once you add Nifty 50, you can see that Nifty 50 is being added. You can also add Sensex, right? Now this is also being added. Now there's another way to load index uh, in a very seamless way. What you can do is you can actually save the index. Uh, you can load the index. Let's say I'm loading another one, right? And once it is loaded, you can now see there are three index now. Now I would like to save these three index for my own comparisons for the future purpose. Now you can, what you can do is you can save it as a list. So I'm just gonna save it as global one and I'm gonna save it, save this list. Once I save this list, it will be saved in the list section and you can now access this list later down the line when you're trying to analyze all these indices. So what I've done actually is before the session, I've saved a couple of index in the global uh, section itself and I can access those lists here itself. So you can now see that I do have some of the index. So let me just load in one of them, which is world markets. You can now see this is the world markets which I have saved. Now you can manage this list, list as well. You can delete some of them. Let's say if I want to delete it, you, it gets e easily deleted from the system. But if you want to you know, load one of the list, you can easily load it from here. Once you load it, you can now see that 10 index are being added. Some of them are, two of them are actually in Indian indices, which is Nifty 50 and BAC Sensex. Other of them are NASDAQ, Hang Seng, DAX, which is Germany, FTSE 100, UK. We have Japan, Japanese index as well. And we have a uh, uh, index from France. So you can see CAC 40. So you can now compare these all indices in one single go. And you can now see different sets of analysis. So one of them is the main list analysis. Now, how about we check how uh, these uh, indices, indices are faring well against uh, having a sharp ratio. Now to check that, I would recommend to check the return column here. What you can effectively do is that in this case, normally when you check all the index or a security, it will be since the start of any particular set of an index. So what you can do is you can effectively click on this, uh, this uh, settings button. You can click on this start date. And let's say we want to check that within the last five years, which indices have had the best sharps ratio, the best risk adjusted return. You can just click on this 2018, right? And once you click go, you can now see the sharps ratio being changed. Now, one of the index, uh, like two of the index are actually negative, which is Hang Seng and FTSE 100. So UK is underperforming here. So you can now see that uh, S&P BAC Sensex is actually having the best sharps ratio against all the indices uh, which are compared in the global ones. 
so it 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 does mean that you can analyze a lot of uh, you know analysis because engine is calculating every single data sets on daily basis you can also see the standard deviation from one particular start point to end point and hence the standard deviation which we use in the sharp ratio is also uh, taking the daily data sets and here what you can do is you can change this custom standard accordingly into the system to check if it is making sense or not so for an example if you want to check the return columns return columns are also given here three years five years so we have taken a custom date as five years so it will just show five year return sets it will not go beyond five years but if you want to go beyond five years you can just reset it once you reset it you can now see the seven years ten years return sets as well so for an example for the last 15 years nasdaq has been the best performer then snp bsc sensex and then nifty 50. so out of all these after nasdaq we have two indian indices and then we have another us index so that's how you can compare it in the compare section as well now the point comes here is that you can use this data set as an excel so if you want to download this entire data set in excel this can be easily be doable all you need to do is just uh, click on it here and it the excel gets downloaded so i'm just going to explore the excel for a bit and then we can head over to the another set of an analysis here you can see this is the excel which is uh, given here and you can use this excel accordingly into the system right so that's an excel uh, format one thing for sure is that you are not going to be taking a look towards the uh, you know holdings column because this are, these are all the indices so basically the main uh, column here for the index are the return columns so that's specifically it and you can also take a look towards relative column but as we are comparing the indices you can easily compare them in the list itself and you can easily manage those lists accordingly into the system now this is what the fundamentals of the main list are what about other analysis once you have added all the index or any securities into the main list you can now do another sets of analysis like drawdowns now drawdowns are very useful to understand the strength of any securities so what we do here is on the daily basis let's compare one of the drawdowns here you can now see the size of the drawdown which is the losses which is the worst drawdown since 2000 now since 2000 this has been the worst drawdown one of them this is the you know dot com bubble bubble you can see which is uh, nasdaq you can uh, compare it you can also see dax here we have nikki we have cac 40 but now what you can do is you can actually change this let's say we change it to 2006 right so once you change it to 2006 you can now see the worst drawdown will be definitely 2007 to 8 crisis which has happened uh, in the us and it actually uh, you know you can see all the size of the losses which also affected the indian markets here so you can see the indian markets was affected by negative 59.86 percent we have sensex which is negative 60.91 and what was the recovery we were actually one of the best recovering indices in this entire chart right so here you can effectively compare between the size the length the length is basically the time it took the number of days it took to have that type of a loss that size of a loss and the recovery is basically the number of working days so you can see the recovery is the you know the lowest recovery uh, you can see it the fastest recovery you can say is by snp bsc sensex and then nifty 50 so that's how this works out and uh, these worst drawdown can also be taken a look towards in the second worst third worst fourth worst and fifth worst now currently what we do is for individual securities uh, like for a mutual fund we give 10 drawdowns but here in this case we have given top five drawdowns top worst drawdowns to the fifth worst drawdown and you cannot compare these drawdowns accordingly and take a look towards it for an example if you see here in the second worst drawdown you cannot see the dates as well so all you need to do is just hover your mouse near the size and you can see the date this is currently the date of uh, the COVID. so the first worst drawdown since 2006 has been definitely 2008 crisis then it was COVID. now this is the second worst drawdown which is a COVID scenario now here you can see that one of them nasdaq uh, now you can see different one of them which are still ongoing so for an example you can see hang seng right so hang seng is definitely having an issue uh, 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 recovery problem where you can see it has been uh, having a drawdown since you know couple of years so here you can take a look towards all these data sets in one single go and here what you can do is you can also click on this graph button which is useful to take a look towards any particular data sets of index so for an example if i click on it i can now see hang seng here and within hang seng i can see that uh, the uh, there's a you know loss uh with, there's a huge loss which happened then you can see which is uh, in 27 to 2007 and then you can see in 2008 which is the end date of the loss and you can see the recovery is 2406 
now here the recovery uh, depends upon uh, the market momentum and you can also see that how much it has recovered for an example if you see this gray area right so this gray area shows us the you know current uh, drawdown which has happened in 2000, uh, 2018 and here it is it has an end date of 2022 which is 28th october and it's still ongoing it's it's still 30% recovered so you can now see these drawdowns on the basis of recovery as well and the current ongoing drawdowns will be given here with an ongoing button and you can also you know take these data sets as a, a matter of fact you can compare multiple data sets here so for an example if i want to take a look towards dow and jones i can easily do that and now i can see here that dow and jones is also having 63 percent recovered but you know another set is still recovering so these this gray area actually shows you the period of drawdown which started and the white area actually shows you the recovery period so that is specifically it for the drawdown and as i talked to before engine calculates all the data sets daily hence every single drawdowns are calculated on the daily basis and you can see that it is a peak to trough and trough to peak analysis which helps us to determine the recovery period of any particular set of index or even a stock or even in a you know mutual fund if you are adding it into the compare section so that's how the drawdown uh, helps us in determining any particular set of the length now you can also have a case study as like what has been the worst drawdown in the last five years so you can just choose in any particular set of a date let's say 2018 is our last five years you can choose it first february and you can now see that uh, in this uh, in this particular set of a scenario two of the index are still ongoing with their recovery with their worst drawdown whereas our index which is indian indices nifty 50 have actually recovered so that uh, is all about drawdowns analysis you can also take a look towards drawdown analysis uh, on a security level individual security level for mutual funds and stocks but here what you can do is you can compare it into the drawdown section now let's head over toward, towards the correlation analysis correlation is specifically useful if you want to determine the diversification uh, of any particular set of even a mutual fund stock or even on an index level you would like to know how index are actually mapping out with each other now there are different sets of use cases for correlation in this case when we are determining indices we are just trying to uh, take down a relationship between two index so for an example when you're taking a look towards an index here like cac and dax now cac is a french index whereas dax is a german index now you, you can effectively see that they are having a very high correlation which is 0 0.90 that's how you can take a look towards because they both come in the euro area and you can now see that they are both moving similarly in the momentum a high correlation can be closer towards one and a lower correlation can be farther away from one or can be closer towards zero so for an example let's take a look towards another set of index which would be more relatable to us for an example nifty 50 versus sensex right so you can now see it's having a very high correlation it's 0.98 you either go to nifty 50 or you either go to sensex you would either see that both of them are behaving uh, you know pretty similarly when they are having a market momentum similarly you can take a look towards other index as well there's another one which is dow and jones and s p 500 us based index right so that's how you can take a look towards indices in a you know in a global level and see if it is making sense on a correlation level because correlation is uh, as uh, engine calculates correlation on the daily basis on the daily data sets all the data sets which you see from 2000 till 2023 which is effectively 23 years data gives us an understanding here that how the markets are actually correlating with each other and that's how the correlation works out and similarly we can also take the uh, take a look towards correlation on a sectoral level so let's say we want to add in sectoral indices in our system how do we do that you can easily do it from search indices here so let's say we are adding nifty pharma here right so i have already showed you another way to add uh, you know all the indexes to save those indices and then load it from my list so what you can do is you can go to the my, my list here and i've already saved in my system you can also do that from your side and once you have done it then you can then uh, you know analyze any particular set of a sectoral indices so here you can see i have nifty index as 18 items so all of them are actually sectoral indices which i have saved previously before the session and what you can do is you can then take a look towards the correlations here now correlations here will be huge you can see some of them will be highly correlated some of them will be lowly correlated but here you can see an entire broad spectrum spectrum of all the indices 
being uh, correlated with each other and showing in a matrix uh, combinations that how it works out like a financial services versus private bank definitely it's logically a high correlation so that's how you can take a look towards on a correlation basis so effectively a high correlation cl closer towards one a low correlation farther away from one or closer towards zero itself so that's the correlation analysis now when we look towards sectors we would definitely want to take a look towards different sets of other analysis, which is uh, effectively uh, on a calendar year basis. And we will also take a look towards risk versus return. Now for a calendar year, which is given here, is that calendar years helps us to determine from December to Jan, what has been the performance. For only 2023, it would be a YTD. Whereas for others, it would be definitely from December to uh, uh, ja uh, from ja Jan to December. And you can effectively see that... Uh, for 2022, uh, you know, what has been the best performing uh, sector in Nifty for 2021. So you can on, also see on these level and you can also sort in on the basis of ascending and a descending data sets. So for an example, I would like to know in 2018, what has been the worst performing sectors? So these are the worst performing sectors, uh, which also included Nifty uh, Pharma. And what has been the best performing in 2022? You can see these are the best performing sectors in the 2022 and 2021. And effectively in 2020, you, you might guess it right that it was Nifty Pharma, which was the best performing, followed by IT. So that's how you can take a look towards on a sectoral basis. And the, as it is, uh, you know, pretty useful to understand that the red, the you know deep red actually indicates the higher sets of losses. Whereas you can see the, you know, deep green indicates the higher sets of, you know, return sets. So you can effectively uh, map it and recognize which have, which has been the best performing sectors in those particular set of calendar years. So these are calendar years analysis. And what you can do is you can also compare these uh, particular set of index on a risk versus return basis. Now risk versus return are also pretty useful. If you would like to know what has been the you know sector in the last, let's say uh, we are just taking a, you know, a case study here that if you want to compare uh, 20, 2013 to 2023, effectively 10 years, it is an approximation year. But if you want to uh, take a look towards on this side, that in this last 10 years, which sector is one of the riskiest sector, sector based on the risk versus return analysis? Here you can see uh, that Nifty PSU Bank is one of the risky. You can see here Nifty Realty, Metal, Media, Auto. You can effectively take a look towards MNC and India Consumption is one of the lesser riskier. So what it does is that it is a relative uh, column. Uh, this entire set of, is a relative uh, risk versus return analysis. Like for an example, if I just zoom it in, if I if I'm just taking a look towards Nifty Auto, Metal and Media. Now, comparatively, you would know that Nifty Auto is lesser riskier. But if you if you take a look at towards only these universe, if I just zoom it in, all I need to do is just click on it and zoom it in. You can now see that compared to these three, Auto has been one of the you know lesser riskier domain. Uh, it's uh, uh, basically a uh, risk is basically what we consider is the standard deviation analyzed risk, which you can see here. And we consider return as the annualized return sets. And you can now see the metal is currently high risk, high return domain. But this is exactly what I've, I was talking about is relative column. Because you can now see relatively realty is more riskier. If I consider realty with metal and media, you can now see that realty is more riskier and metal is here, right? So that is how you can take a look towards it. You do not need to remove indices from the main list uh, to, to compare only three index, right? All you need to do is just zoom in into that panel because that zoom in actually works out and helps you in comparison here itself. As you want to change the dates over time, all you need to do is just change the dates over time. And you can now see effectively all the data sets being changed based on that point to point parameter. So these both of the parameters, which is analyze return and analyze risk is based on the point to point data sets, which you choose here. So you can calculate over different dates, right? So that's how it works out. And you can also, you know, uh, choose to opt in for a, data label. So if you want to make it a cleaner approach in your chart, you can just remove this data label, which will help you to make the chart cleaner. Now here, there's another set of a um, very important uh, tool, which is point to point tool. Now this point to point tool is more effective when you're uh, taking a look towards mutual funds. But here it, in the hypothetical sense, we have also given one of the very important uh, update here, which is a lump sum investment value and analyze uh, an absolute uh, return sets conversion between the index. Now let's, let's take an example of absolute here for, for a brief while here. So when you take a look here, you can now see that Nifty infrastructure, Nifty MNC between 2018 versus 2022, 2023, you can now see that 
the best performing uh, uh, sector is Nifty IT, right? Now, these are all point to point data sets which you can compare between the dates. Now, these dates can be changed. If I want to change it from 2018, I can easily do that. And I can easily then, uh, you know, compare it accordingly into the system. So you can now see that between these dates, the worst performing sectors were Nifty Media, Nifty Auto, Nifty Metal, right? Now, what about the annualized? return sets if you want to analyze this uh, because it, it analyze will help us to analyze all the data sets either it can be a six month data sets or it can be a four years data sets uh, and analyze it so what you do is you just click on analyze and you can now compare it effectively into the system based on analyzed so that's how effectively it works out and here we have given the lump sum investment value so for lump sum investment value uh let's say uh, there's a use case that uh, you can download these data sets in an analyzed format and download it here as a download data and then you can use this lump sum and again download it as an excel to to make your own uh, comparative analysis for all the sectors now these can work around with the mutual funds as well but here in the lump sum case let's consider as one lakh here to make it more uh, seamless now you can now see that one lakh is now uh, uh, one second yeah so you can now see the one lakh is now one lakh fifty one thousand for nifty infrastructure 1,35,000 for Nifty MNC. And you can now sort, sort in based on that. So you can now see that in the last five years, if someone would have gone for IT, it would have been you know double of the uh, entire lump sum investment. So uh, it, it works out uh, very well when you are trying to compare it on a basis of lump sum. And uh, you can effectively compare for any particular set of a scenario. Had a person would have invested in 2008, what would have happened? Now you can take a look towards that as well and see if it makes sense or not. Right. And you can now sort in those data sets and come up with your own recommendation here. Now, these data sets can be downloadable in Excel. It is a CSV format. And then you can then use it accordingly for your own customized analysis. And that's how it works out for the point to point analysis. So overall on this entire section overview, which I've given here in the engine markets terminal, you can compare multiple sets of index. If you want to uh, compare other sets of, you know, securities such as fund stocks you can easily do that from add a security section just a second yeah add a security section but let's say if you want to compare it on a historical category average because this is another update which we came up with is that you can effectively compare a large cap or a let's say a mid cap one right and uh, compare it effectively with all the sectoral index so let's say we want to compare pharma uh, sectoral pharma of mutual funds versus nifty pharma so you can do that as well you can now see that nifty pharma is here and we can now also add we have also added category averages uh, as sectoral pharma so you can compare the two to understand that if the mutual funds on a you know equity mutual funds on that basis are actually faring well against that particular set of an index or not so that's uh, another way to compare historical category averages but that can be another another session for this uh, for historical category averages you can also take a look towards it uh, later down the line uh, after our session. So that is it for the entire session. If there any, if there is any question, I will open the forum for Q and A, uh, and you can write it on the chat box or verbally, and we can try to address them. Uh, thank you very much. Can I ask uh, the question, or it should be only? Sure, you can ask the question. Go ahead. Okay, right. thank you. Uh, good session. Thank you. And um, I would like to know first, does the Sartino ratio versus Sharpie ratio? You have, uh, I think, in the fund section, it is possible to see also the Sartino ratio if you want to choose that, right? I, I have seen that somewhere it is available, but uh, under the compare, unfortunately, it is not available. And in fact, Sartino ratio is much more precise and useful ratio compared to the Sharpie itself. I do not know whether you know the how that ratios work uh, more in depth. But if you go and do check that analysis, if you, you will see that Sartino ratio does not worry about the positive side of volatility. It will only worry about the negative side of the products, which is much more important for us. So from that perspective, uh, while it is available under funds, but it is missing under compare. If you go to compare, you will see only, um, only uh, Sharpie is available. So can you please look into how we can bring that uh, Sartino ratio in the future, please? Um, yes, yeah, sure. Um, so this is actually, uh, the, we have been asked uh, uh, to add the Sartino ratio uh, right next to Sharp here in the compare section. So this is in development and it should be released um, within the next 
two to three weeks hopefully within the next two weeks but uh, it's definitely coming perfect and one more uh, again a request from the markets if you go to the first uh, where you you were showing the comparison between different uh, indices and all these things it's it's good is there a way where we can see the heat map of uh, the indices or at even at the sectoral level the the past historical pe versus current pe kind of in a heat map average versus last 10 or 15 years of uh, pe versus what it is today sure um for index pe data we actually have um pe data for some of the indices but not all of them um this is uh, been an ongoing ongoing issue and we are trying to uh, kind of talk to our data providers to get the whole set um so uh, you know it's uh, it's in process uh, we hope to uh, solve it soon I, i can't really give you a timeline right now because i don't know if we'll get a, a positive resolution but um uh, we are hoping to get pe data once we have pe data in our system for all the indices here then we would be able to create something like that okay but when you say pe data for all the indices anyway whatever you are showing is based on price right and okay the yes. earnings part the earnings part is uh, it so it should be also available somewhere in the same system maybe yes. from the data yes yes in fact it's even easier than that for us because uh, for the ones that we are getting pe data we're basically getting a price and we're getting an index pe so mm-hmm. we don't have to calculate we can just take the pe data uh, as it comes and um, and then create the heat maps um, and more analysis uh, tools as you talked about we just have to make sure that the pe data is available for all the indices we are showing um, not just some so that's the problem uh, we're trying to solve no no i think yeah okay that's a good point but at the same time probably you are developing these kind of tools in an agile manner right it's not that yes. you want to give a perfect solution just to more so everything is so at least for whatever you it is available today maybe for nifty 50 small cap mid cap mm-hmm. if you have those at least please bring it on without much uh, uh, you know hesitation because even that will be very helpful when we discuss with our clients to show where the, the opportunities exist today sure so in the short term what we could probably work on immediately is to show the latest pe of indices right now um historical mm-hmm. will take some more time because again um even uh, fewer data points have that available um will the latest pe for the indices be useful for you definitely latest pe could be a, a good uh, what you call like a uh what you what you say like the information current information system let's call it yes. but yes. but eventually when you are able to bring the last you should provide maybe like a filter saying do you want to compare with the 10 year average or 15 or 20 year average something like that so that we can play with that and show look in the last 10 years pe was 15 average yeah. but today the market is around 22 or last 20 year average it is 17 and still we are good because our current pe is 18 at least Correct. to that level we should be able to speak with our clients understand okay so we will we will uh, we'll, we'll start to do some work on at least getting the latest pe data out there on the platform and then uh, hopefully we can sort out the historical issues as well yeah yeah definitely because see at the end of the day you are this tool is good for us i mean from the mutual fund a lot of things we are able to do and thanks for the constant improvements that you are doing and it's much appreciated uh so i started using the tool only in the last uh, few months ago right so yes. i started to feel that these kind of things if it is available because a lot of people will refer to prime or as database kind of things i believe right yes, so yes. some of these things could be addressed with only this tool we don't have money to go and license too many tools to be honest understand if you of provide course. more value then we also stick with one tool for quite long that's why absolutely yeah yeah we okay. we will definitely look into it thank you very much um there is another question saying can we add a delete fund button in all tabs um yes uh, okay so the reason we only have the delete button on the main list um was basically you know to make sure that it gets removed from everything else uh, but that's a good point um we can uh, try to uh, i uh, look into this um uh, umair let's just make a note of this um, i know that it's an irritation if you're um 
on a different tab and you want to remove a fund, you have to come back to the main list, delete, and then, then go back. Uh, but uh, we will um, we will have a look at this again. Sure, sir. Noted. Um, another question is saying, can we check portfolio overlap of indices? So this is um, not currently possible because we don't have index weights. Uh, we have tried to purchase it, but it's exorbitantly expensive from the exchanges. Um, so we are looking at other sources that uh, may have index weights. Um, there is one way that you can kind of do it in a pseudo manner. Um, there are quite a few index funds which have those index weights. And if you actually add them in the compare section, um, you'll, yeah, you, you'll be actually able to do an overlap analysis. Um, so I'm not sure which ones will have it, but Umair, let's just load a particular index fund. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Um, yeah, let's just add a couple of index funds. Yeah, small cap 50, et cetera. Uh, some of the major ones. Just add any of them. Um, quite a few of them have now started publishing their um, their actual weights rather than investing in ETFs. Um, so we can go to overlap and see. Okay, so these don't have it. Um, so yeah, that's the. Uh, there are some index funds which actually publish their underlying weights. Um, but um, actually, just uh, uh, may I just click on any of them? So we can check in the OV asset allocation. Yeah, uh, they don't have it, um, uh, but some of them do. So uh, currently we don't have any index weights and that's the reason that you can't. Okay, so there it is. So that's one index fund, the Nifty 50 index fund. This actually has um, index weights. Um, so you, if you add this in the compare section, you're effectively, uh, you know, comparing close to or exactly what uh, Nifty Fifty weights are. So you could use this as a proxy, basically. Um, so, for example, if you add a fund or something like that, um, yeah. You might start to see Hello. some results. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm Lalit calling from here. Hello. Sure, go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Yeah. See, uh, see, four sessions back, I made a request to add that step up as that is one thing you promise that you will come back. I request you to please, if it is possible. Yes, absolutely. Um, that is definitely. I'm aware that it's a, it's one of the list in development. So um, a, a, you should expect that. Um. Um, I would estimate it within the next two to three weeks, but um, uh, we will hopefully get that as soon as possible. Um, and just to confirm, what that would do is in the monthly SIP tool, um, when you run any SIP, we will give you additional options of um, adding another date. Um, and then, uh, the, so the individual tool. Uh, uh, as for my calculation, asset allocation. Yeah, it's a okay. stock uh, from Excel. I was uh, using those uh, stock upload with ISN and quantity. Okay. Uh, are, are, you, are we still talking about the step up SIP? No, no, no. Step up SIP, you answered that you will do okay. it in two, three weeks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. second question is I was trying to upload my investors' uh, equity shares portfolio okay. into our system. So yeah. I faced, first, I faced one problem that. Uh, the allocation percentage it was showing is absolutely different than what actual allocation was. Right. Um, that and the second thing yeah. was uh, today afternoon I spoke to our helpline and uh, yeah. I got the helpline uh, email addresses to send the screenshot. So I tried to upload the portfolio again, but unfortunately I could not save that portfolio. So I pinged somebody, Sharuk, and uh, told him to please take your turn. Uh, any risk can help me with this. Right. So that was uh, one thing and uh, wanted to upload that equity portfolio also for one of my clients. So I was facing is, some difficulty. Is it, a, is it a CDSL or NSDL statement? No, no, it is not CDSL. It is an Excel file. Okay, and okay. As per our format, ISN and quantity yeah. or value, yes, yes. we have three formats, right? Yes, yes. So I was using uh, ISN and uh, quantity. Okay. 
um and uh, once paste, you I, yeah yeah copy did paste and everything an, yeah did you get an error at this when you clicked on validate input uh, no i got that, uh, out, yeah i will tell you i was uploading around 464 is ions okay out of which 40 ions were not captured is ions sorry i see Okay. So the, it's okay. Those were not captured. Might be they might have no. delisted or they may not be in existence. It's okay. That's not a problem. Sure. That way I can sort it. The problem was the remaining 410 ISN. I was not able to create portfolio or uh, save it somewhere. I see. Okay. And, um, uh, yeah. After that, what happens, uh, Anirup? Anirup? See, once I create that, then I get a single shot. I don't get the breakup of portfolio. Um, okay, so I think once it's saved correctly, I think it should run properly. Um, yeah, it so is running. I, yeah, it's running. But after okay. that, I'm not able to save. It is uploading. It is saving. Okay, uh, is, uh, so maybe over. maybe I feel I think maybe the issue is happening where it's trying to save the portfolio, and because there's so many, an error is happening while saving. So um, yeah, I understand. So, so can you please, uh, I've just written our support email address here. Can you please send us the Excel that you are uploading? We will sure, check it out. Yeah, because I, I, I believe what's happening is the portfolio is loading fine and running fine. But when you're trying to save it because of the number of stocks, there is something failing. So we will check it out and fix it. Yeah. Uh, so I have the email addresses. Shall I send that file to those email addresses? Yes, please. yes I've just sent it on the chat. If you just write over there, we will sort it out. Yeah, but right now I am uh, not in the front of the desk. I am logging from my system. Uh, no problem. But anyway, I mean, a required format, I will send one of my investors file to you. And uh, yes. if it goes perfectly, then I can, uh, then I would also have to have talk on Tuesday on this again. How can yes. I save it properly and how can we demonstrate our client? It is a mess actually, to be frank. It is absolute yes. mess. The value is runs in crores, but uh, top 20 uh, stock kind of contribute 80% of the value. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. I mean, the, there's so many stocks in some ways it doesn't um, make sense. But, you know, let, let's solve your saving problem first and then we can, yeah. you know, take it from there. So, like, I will mail to those uh, helpline uh, email addresses what I got today afternoon. Uh, yes, absolutely. Support at engineresearch.com. Got it. Got it. I will do yeah. that. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Venkat um, here, I have one more question. Um, yes, yes. just uh, probably I do not know maybe the facility already exists with you guys if you go to the compare uh, for comparing two different portfolios I mean I have mutual fund portfolio the existing one let's say from the customer which I have saved in the list uh, yeah. as existing portfolio and I have saved another list as a portfolio that I would like to propose to the customer let's say and uh, when I choose that in the comparison section there is something on the top which says uh, uh, compare portfolios right um, mm. when i do this uh, i can clearly so mod so here you have more deb and then model portfolio on the right okay yes so first question is is it possible to kind of uh, precise the allocation i mean can i play with that how can i play with that allocation numbers sure. yeah that um so you can't change them directly here right okay unfortunately you um depends on where you've loaded it from if you've loaded it from the portfolio section right you will have to edit the portfolio um, here and update it so for example um you know if we change this to 22 or whatever something like that um mm -hmm. and uh, and then you click the update button here okay yeah, so now that's updated. Now, if you go back um, to the compare section, uh, the portfolio compare section, and just reload this again, then the new weights will show up. So it's not immediate, um, but um, yeah, I mean, we could probably provide a facility to edit it here that might make things easier. Exactly. Um, so yeah. if you could, yeah. it, it you know it. But because for me, first of all, I have never tried this portfolio section at the bottom, which you show. This uh, even even if even if I had known, there is a sinking issue because immediately we cannot see that happening in front of the customer's eyes. I agree. Right? Like yes. exactly yes. exactly what you did. You did a change, but it is not mm. real time. It is not reflecting on the portfolio yet. 
yeah so, yeah i understand so, um, and yeah. and also the other issue is that if you actually load it from your rta clients for example you cannot edit that uh, you can only edit the manual data clients right um, hmm. so for example if you load a rta client that those client uh, portfolios are not editable so maybe it's better for us to provide you with a kind of um easy editing, to change yeah, exactly here. but hmm. none of this will be saved though right that's okay uh, yeah once we create the report at least that can be saved and we can keep it intact yes 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 uh, that is that's possible right. or okay, you can and save then, it as a yeah. manual client um if you want um right okay right, that's, right. that's fine umair let's let's write this down as a new requirement um we can we can try to look at it um doing it so, i've i've noted it down yeah. yeah how i have been doing the comparison is uh, from the compare list i just mm -hmm. choose uh, maybe the specific list it automatically says compare 16 compare 14 compare 13 15 yes you know? yes so even there if it's a possibility to write down the name instead of mm -hmm. just having compare compare numbers it would also be nice How yeah can so I... here yeah so here the thing is when you save uh, a compare list uh, i can go and rename there okay. so you can just click mm -hmm. on rename and here you just type it and hit enter okay okay got it and also okay. after that you can change the folder because it may be something important for you so mm -hmm. you might you know um so let's go back to that the one we just changed the name of um it's somewhere yeah there and you can move this to a different folder okay okay got it you can even so here this is good and how much time it takes for the changes that you make here in terms of allocation to get reflected on the oh it's instant so you see, even to mod dev, we just made a change, right? Mm -hmm. There's mod dev, we, cha we just changed the uh, portfolio allocations here. And yes. then when we went back to the portfolio compare section and yeah. we reloaded it, it instantly showed you the difference. So for example, okay. let's say we got 33% in Kotak Prexi cap. So update this mm -hmm. um, and then go to portfolio compare. Okay. Um, so, and here, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, China, TK, we don't have the old one here. So now you can see code of flexi cap is 33% now. Yeah, yeah. So actually it is real time. That's not a problem. The only uh, yeah. flexibility missing is in case if I want to just play with it very quickly exactly. in front of that is not possible. Exactly. That's exactly. okay. But at the same time, whatever we do here, it will not affect the portfolio saved before. No, the, no, no, no. That's, that it will okay. never do. That it will never right. do. Okay, yeah. fine. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very Any much. Other... The session was helpful. I will, uh, no problem. Thank you, in. sir. Thank you. Any other Thank questions, please Thank you uh, uh, let us know in the chat or just uh, unmute and ask. Okay, looks like the, the that's it. Maybe we can close for today. Sure. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we would come up next week with the next topic, uh, interesting topic, and with a few more updates as well. So thank you again, everyone. Have a nice weekend ahead.